Hello, just wanted to uh, run a quick demonstration of uh, what I do for security and explain a couple things. So I go on to my uh, Synology NES box. I'm going to go under Control Panel and under Security. There's two areas that um, act as blocking and protection, so I, they can run against each other and be a little bit confusing at times. Um, the main one is your firewall. Um, so basically that should be enabled. Uh, I'm going to come down here. You can have different rule sets, but I'm just, um, if I click here, you can see there's a default rule set and a custom. I use the custom, and then, um, so I just made my own rule set. I, if I do an edit rules here, you can see that um, there's a bunch of rules in here. They're all enabled. So you can easily disable a rule if you want to do testing or whatever. Um, so I've got a whole bunch of rules in here. You can see that um, there's a deny at the bottom of it. The rest of these are allows. Um, what happens here is uh, Synology um, any firewall will look at the rules top down. So basically, it's going to say, Hey, I allow um, this IP address. So this is a range. Um, it could be a single IP address. So this is my external. So I'm going to say, Hey, from uh, external, if I go through my house out, um, I'm going to allow myself back in on these ports. Uh, doesn't allow any other ports, but basically allows these ports. Um, so as it goes down the list... Hi guys and gals, just wanted to introduce you to a piece of software that I use that's critical in my operation. Uh, take 90 seconds to watch it or skip ahead 90 seconds. Would it be bad news if you lost that great photo, video, important file, or your whole computer died? Syncovery is the Swiss Army knife of the backup and sync world, allowing you to easily set up repeatable sets of backups called profiles that you can run either manually whenever you want to run them or also schedule one or more profiles so you don't forget to back up those important files. Syncovery can back up and sync from practically anywhere to anywhere such as your hard drive to an external hard drive, a thumb drive, as well as to the cloud which is any place outside of your home or business such as Google Drive, Amazon, Dropbox, DigitalOcean Droplet or other virtual private server. You can start simple and go to extremely detailed control by fine-tuning your profiles and even beyond that for extremely unique cases by running Pascal scripts which you can either run yourself or have created usually for free by Syncovery's programmer Tobias. Be sure to visit me at fredstipsandtricks.com where I provide how-to and tutorial videos and blogs to help you get Syncovery and other things running, give you tons of practical tips right from backups and syncs that I personally create and use to other things. And you can save big money on your purchase of Syncovery by clicking the purchase button on my site. Practically your friend. Fred. This is I'm going to allow this person, that person, the other person, this subnet, blah, blah, blah. And then it comes down and goes, if you're not, then I'm going to deny. So I put a specific deny might not have to, but I'd like to specify and be very specific about what I'm allowing and disallowing. Um, so I deny there, and then I've got uh, Cloud Station, which can be accessed by anybody all over the world, um, and a couple other things. Or Synology Assistant, blah, blah, blah. There's a network backup in there. And again, from anywhere in the world, allow. Okay? I'm going to uh, show you how to set up an all important, the all important rule um, to block everything beyond what you've got um, set. So I'm going to go into the uh, rules. And uh, the two that I'm going to show you right now are the ICMP. That's, I'll show you that later because that's not as important. But the all, all, all deny, that's a huge one. So what we're saying here is if the user coming in does not fall into any of these IP addresses or um, these ports, then 
it's going to slip down, down, down the rule list, and it's going to go past all these. And then finally, if this wasn't here, it would, for some reason, they've got it set to um, allow. So basically, what I do is put a master rule in here that says anything beyond this, if you're not on this list up here, deny. Okay, so I'm basically what I'll do is I'll remove this just to uh, show you. So I'm going to select here, I hit the delete. And I can say OK there. And then just give it a minute here to settle out. And then we'll go back and edit the rules. And right now, anybody that doesn't fall on this list can access my NAS other ways. OK, so I'm going to add this all important rule. Basically, it comes up and you say create. And the default is to create this firewall rule with all ports, all IP addresses. And here we're going to change from allow to deny. And that ends up at the bottom anyway, so we're good there. So basically we're saying here now is if you don't fall into this range, you're blocked. That's it for you. Now the problem I ran into when I did that was it also blocked my ability to ping the NAS box, which I need for myself and for my services that detect whether the box is up or down. So basically I found that I can create this ICMP rule. So I'm going to delete this rule and show you how I created it. So I highlight it, I delete it, I say OK. So now we're back to where I cannot ping my NAS box at all. So, go back into Firewall, Edit Rules, and I come down to Custom. Okay, this is a little bit hidden, but you're going to go to Custom, and then under Protocol, because ICM, because Ping is not um, TCP or UDP, it's actually ICMP. Okay, that's the protocol it's using. So, if I go um, ICMP there, and I say... Um, sources from anywhere in the world which basically just means I think locally in my house because people can't really come through my router and ping my device so I'm not too worried beyond this I'm gonna say allow now the problem being if you know what I've been saying is that because ICMP showed up after this deny list it's gonna come down through this list and it only hits the deny and goes nope nothing past that so what I'm going to do is take this now, and I'm going to drag it to the top. Okay, okay got to there. Did it make it? Yes. So now it's at the top of the rule set. So the very first thing it says is allow pinging to come in. And that's basically how my rule set is. And it seems to work fantastically. So I'll basically OK that. And... When I go back and look at it, make sure you go back and look at it just to make sure that it did take. And you can see all the rules, uh, ICMP first, all my specific needs here. And then um, finally, if you don't make these, the cut is you don't get into my NAS box. You know, it's, again, like I say, it works extremely well. But it was very important to add this rule. Okay, so make sure you get that in there. Um, don't add that as your first rule, or you'll lock yourself out in a lot of ways. I would wait till you've got all of these rules done, and then add this rule. Okay. Um, don't do it with your NAS box connected to the internet if you want to be really safe, because until you get this one in here, people can be knocking at the door of your NAS box. So that basically explains um, the firewall very, there's also, um, you can block based on your interfaces, so I've got LAN 1, LAN 2, um, but I use the all interfaces, and as it says here, if no rules um, in all interfaces, then it goes to each interface. So basically, just make sure all your rules are in here, you should be fine, unless you have specific case needs. Um, the next thing that I'm going to show you is uh, things that have tripped me up before, but basically under account. Um, when you've got SSH turned on, and uh, you probably do if you're getting anywhere 
um, at all complex needs with the NAS at all, or if you want to look at things. But basically what you're doing is SSHing into the uh, NAS. So you're allowing SSH in. Um, so once you've done that, and maybe I'll show you how to do that a sec. Under terminal, if you come under terminal and SNMP, you can see here there's a um, enable SSH service, and I've got I use port 2222. Normally SSH is on port 22. Um, I just gave it a little bit extra protection by choosing a different port. Um, yeah, so that's enabled. So I've got SSH enabled. If you have SSH enabled then you really want to come down to the um, security, security, where are you? Let's go back here. Control panel. Security, there we are, sorry. And then come under account. And this is related to SSH. So you're going to enable auto block. Um, what's happening here is once you have SSH enabled, if you open it up to the world at all, you'll have people trying to break into your system. And you'll see that because what you'll do is come into enable auto block. Um, I've really limited mine down. I said, you've got one chance at logging into my system within 60 minutes. And if you don't log in properly the first time, you go on to a block list. So what happens here is down in this allow block, uh, allow slash block list. So there's an allow list and a block list. So, if they don't log in properly, they end up on the blocked list. So, if I come over to my block list, you can see I've got a lot of them, just people trying to break in. You can even see uh, what country the IP is coming from, sort of approximately, but it's pretty good. So, you can see I've got Russia, United States, and yeah, Russia seems to be trying to break in a lot these days. I don't know why, but... I think they're trying to take over the world, maybe. Um, so, we've got a whole bunch of blocked IP addresses here. But if you've got a friend or somebody that really did want, want or should have gotten into your system and they typed the password wrong, they'll end up on this block list, okay? So at that point or before, you can add them to the allow list, okay? So what you do is just basically do a create and either a single host or a whole subnet if you don't know what that means just go for the single host if you know exactly what it is um, so once they're on that list if they're on the block list still because they can be on both the block list will rule and they still won't be able to get in and it will throw you for a loop so basically come down here you can sort by the IP address it makes it a lot easier to find you find the address that you did put into the allow list and you find it here and you basically just um, remove it from the list once it's removed there and and it's in the allow list and if the firewall allows them in then they can get into your system okay so there's basically three things there you know there's the um, edit rules so you want to make sure that they're on there um, to be able to come in somehow and so they need to be in one of these um, you can have like I say you can have uh, there's 192.168.77.0 uh, that's my um, house internal network so it's a dot zero and then a, a subnet mask um, you can see there's a 255.255.255.0, so that's the mask. So it lets basically 255, 254 uh, machines into, um, into my NAS box on these ports, okay? And again, 2222 is instead of the normal SSH port 22, but it doesn't matter. Um, it's just the port that I'm allowing. Okay, so that's basically what I wanted to tell you about um, networking and firewalling and protecting um, your NES box. Things that have tripped me up. So uh, I made a list of things, um, <coughs> catchies on the firewall. So basically I'll just go down through it. Uh, what I've learned so far, there's two places for rules again. 
<clears throat> number one is the uh, firewall itself. The other one is under account, the auto block that I showed you. Um, let's see here. Uh, rules apply at the time of attachment. That's another one where I caught. Um, if you make a change to the firewall and um, you expect the change in instantly, in other words, if you're logged into SSH and you make the change to the firewall, you will not see that person get blocked or as you're testing. You have to log out, log back in because it seems to be at the time of attaching to the NAS. It's a little bit different than other firewalls I've seen, but just so that that's another place that you can get tripped up, okay? Um, the, so the most restrictive rule applies is what I found. If number one has a deny, so basically number one being the regular firewall, number two being the auto block section for SSH. Um, if number one has a deny and number two has an allow, it is denied. Um, so number one being the firewall. Um, if number one, the firewall has an allow, um, below a deny rule, it's blocked. Basically, you've got to watch for order of precedence. If number one has an allow, and number two has an entry in the auto block, it is denied. because um, And that's if you're SSHing into the box. It will be denied um, because it's on that deny list. If number two has entries in both auto block, allow, and block, it is blocked, as I mentioned before. Make sure that you clear them out of the block if you want to allow them. Um, for number one, the regular firewall order is important. So remember that. You can drag those, um, those firewall rules up and down. So you want to make sure that the most important are at the top. In other words, allow me in, allow me in, allow me in. And then put your deny in after that. If you put the deny at the top, that happens first and nobody can get into your system and you'll be scratching your, uh, your head wondering what the heck is going on. Um, order of entries, uh, the all interfaces gets priority. So I would put all your rules in there unless you have any other reason not to. Um, it seems like the rule gets applied at login. So um, I have SSL. That's S S S H actually. Um, anyway, so it, yeah, if you make a rule and you really want it enforced, you can just reboot your NAS. Two minutes later, I guess you'll be up and running again. So it's not that bad, but um, unless you're just running tests and you can log out and back in. Uh, for number two, um, that's the uh, SSH blocking and auto blocking. Um, number one, so the firewall takes precedence over number two. So if you allow in a number two, but block in the regular firewall, it is still blocked. So you can allow in the auto block area, but still number one gets applied. Uh, I think that's kind of redundant. Anyways, I hope that helps you. Um, visit me at fredstipsandtricks.com. Um, I will put up a sponsor thing too from a fantastic piece of software that you probably don't know about for doing backups and that sort of thing. And here it comes. Thanks for watching.